Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with trigonometry. So we have a mixture of different things. We have log of 3 minus sine x with base 2 equals sine x. And we're going to be solving for x. Let's see how we can solve these kinds of problems because this is a non-standard type of problem. So we cannot just do it by standard methods. I'll explain a little bit what, what I mean by that. So when you look at an equation like this, you see that sine x is, is being repeated. You can just go ahead and set it equal to something, which kind of makes sense, right? And then let's just say sine x, let's set it equal to t. So we have another t here. And now this is going to give us log of 3 minus t with base 2 equals t. Well, this kind of looks a little better, doesn't it, right? And how do you solve it? Well, as a logarithmic function, I can try to graph this, right? The base is 2, so it's going to be increasing. But there is an asymptote at t equals 3, which is going to be vertical. Obviously, we kind of need to talk about the domain and the range, so on and so forth, right? But then, uh, how do you know the exact intersection point? If you're using Desmos, sometimes it'll be easy to tell, or some other graphing calculator, online or otherwise. But let's go ahead and do this. Use the definition of logarithms. And what is the definition of logarithms? It, it tells us that, hey, you start at the base, go across 2 to the power t, and then you get this as a result, okay? In other words, we're asking the question 2 to the power, what number equals 3 minus t, and the power would be t in this case. So, take a look at this equation, and you could probably guess and check some solutions, right? Or if you want, you can put all the t's on the same side, and kind of write it like this. And this should be familiar. I think we've done similar problem problems before, where we can kind of guess and check. But one of the most important things that we need to do would be to... Uh, check our work and also to prove that there are no other solutions or if there are other solutions to try to find them So let's see what we can do first of all when you look at something like 2 to the t plus t 2 to the t is an increasing function, right? And this is also an increasing function because it has a positive slope So their sum is also going to generate an increasing function because an increasing function has a positive derivative on an interval on which it's increasing and if you differentiate the sum you'll, you'll be adding two positive quantities make sense so what does that mean it means that we have an increasing function being set equal to a constant which means a horizontal line function wise and there should be only one intersection point so something like this right we have an increasing function and a horizontal line they can only intersect once right? If you had a non-horizontal line, uh, then they could have intersected more than once, right? Suppose you have something like this, and then you have another line that's not horizontal. What if it's a vertical line, right? Well, vertical lines are not functions, so that would be really problematic. But anyways, you get the idea. So at this point, how do you find the answer, right? You could guess and check. Okay, looks like t equals 1 is a solution, right? What is t equals 1 going to give us, right? It's going to give us 2 to the 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3. And since there's only one solution, that should be it. Correct? Great. Nice, but again, uh, there's some guess and check involved. So some people don't like it. Where is the algebraic? Where is the, what is that called? Synthetic or is that called analytical solution maybe? Anyway, some type of algebraic solution where you're not guessing, okay? So let's go back to the original problem, and we're going to look at it from another angle because we want to basically uh, avoid guessing in this case. I mean, uh, we already guessed and found something, right? And I'll get back to it, but let's go ahead and take a look at it uh, and keep it trigonometric, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean, don't replace sine x with anything. As, but still use the definition of uh, logs. So you can again start at 2, go to sine x, 2 to the power of sine x equals 3 minus sine x. Now, when you replace sine x with t, this is what we got. And it was not, well, it was easy to solve, but um, it's not that rigorous, right? I mean, come on, you just guessed it. What if you couldn't guess it? <laughs> okay, great. 
Now, in this case, we have a trigonometric expression, which is nice because sine x, if x is a real number, right, uh, is bounded. So what does it mean? It means that sine x is always going to be between two numbers, right? And what are those numbers? Do you know them? Sine x is always going to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Because sine is basically the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. And if you're thinking about obtuse angles, angles that are greater than 180, then you can think of the unit circle. And even on the unit circle, you notice that when you try to find the sine of an angle, it's always going to be on the y-axis. And at its absolute value is always going to be less than 1. An absolute value less than 1 means that we get this interval. Make sense? These two are equivalent, right? So what does that mean, though? It just means that the maximum value for sine x is 1. And that's good. Because now I can use it to maximize this. If sine x is less than or equal to 1, which means that's the maximum value, then 2 to the power sine x must be less than or equal to 2 to the power 1. Because this is when sine x is maximized, right? And 2 to the power something is definitely an increasing function. Therefore, it's just going to preserve the inequality. Make sense? Okay. I hope it does. So, what did we get? We got 2 to the power sine x is less than or equal to 2. That means the maximum value for 2 to the power sine x is equal to 2. Great. What about the right-hand side? Awesome. That's what we're going to look at now. 3 minus sine x. Now, we, we now know that... Let's go ahead and write it down here for reference, okay? We now know that sine x is between negative 1 and 1. So, how can I use that information, right? Maybe I can use this side sine x is less than or equal to 1, and I multiply both sides by negative 1. As you know, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the inequality for obvious reasons, right? Oh, I hope those are obvious. And then add 1 to both sides. Hmm. If you add 1 to both sides, uh, that's actually not going to work. Never mind, we should be adding 3 to both sides. Okay, that's what I was thinking about 1 minus sine x for some reason, I don't know why. But if you add 3 to both sides like this, plus 3 here, and plus 3 here, right? I added a 3. I didn't subtract because minus sine x. Sine x wasn't negative already. Yeah, we get something interesting. 3 minus sine x is going to be greater than or equal to 2. Hmm, that's interesting. So I'm getting like two conflicting um, results. Uh, my equation is... What is my equation? I forgot. Okay, my equation was 3 minus sine x is equal to 2 to the power sine x. Okay. Sorry, I had to look it up. So, and now I'm, I'm getting that, okay, this needs to be greater than or equal to 2. This needs to be less than or equal to 2. You see the minimum, minimum values and the maximum values for those two things. That's good, actually. Conflict is good here. Sometimes conflict can be good, right? Most of the time it's not. But here we do see that we have an equality and one side needs to be greater than or equal to 2. The other side wants to be less than or equal to 2. They can only agree at 2. So that means they're both equal to 2, which is nice. And obviously, we did not get this with the substitution. That's the kind of like a shortcoming uh, of substitution here, I guess. From here, we get sine x equals 1. Of course, um, we got the same result with substitution, but... It was by guessing. This time, it's not. You see the power of what? Trigonometry? I don't know. Something like that. So sine x equals 1, but we're trying to solve for x. So how do you solve for x? Well, you can say, where, where is sine x 1, right? Sine x is only 1 at pi over 2, right? And of course, you can add multiples. So you're going to write x equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n where n is an integer. And this is going to give you all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.